Sustained as a General Authority 70 in April of 2009. At the time that I was called, I was busy with my work. I was a physician, and Ruth was an attorney. And we were asked to leave those nets and go. We were headquartered in Johannesburg as of August of 2009. The world changed for us because it was no longer doing something that I felt competent doing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was doing something where I wasn't as competent, didn't feel as competent. And yet there were things that had happened in my life that prepared us for it. The Africa Southeast area was rapidly growing starting at this mm -hmm. time. In uh, DR Congo it started before we got there. But it then creates these situations where Nothing's routine, and you have mm -hmm. to get up and look at what you have. You try to solve the problems and receive inspiration from heaven as to what to do. And I think that learning over years of being a problem solver is what was key, and, and knowing how to connect with heaven mm -hmm. to get heaven's help for these things. It was an extraordinary experience. I can't even th tell you what it was like. I can't explain it. It was so powerfully moving to go there and fall in love with the people. And there are differences in the countries. There are differences in the landscapes and other things. There are differences in socioeconomic matters. But we absolutely fell in love with the people. Absolutely. And we realized that it was part of heaven for us. Because we didn't go there to teach. I guess we were supposed to do that, but we learned. Mm -hmm. We learned from people who knew the simplicity that is inherent in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We learned about people who love their families, who cherish those relationships, who knew how to help each other, and we learned from them. And then as we learned in one place about it, we could teach it in another. But we were so blessed by being there. Our first visit to Kananga, where President Nelson is now in Nelson That's Temple. Right. I had gone out onto the street. We were staying at a little inn for uh -huh. a hotel where uh -huh. they delivered water to us each morning right. and filled our rain barrel. Uh -huh. They had no electricity unless you paid $20 an hour and they'd run the generator. Yeah. So it was a warm day. I went out with the mission president's wife, Pam Headley. Uh -huh. And we went out on the street just to see what we could see. She said, maybe we can buy some tomatoes. Maybe we can find something mm -hmm. for our dinner. We had brought some food that we could eat, something to go with it. And as we walked down the street just looking, it wasn't long before literally I was surrounded by this mob of young men with cameras. And I think they thought I was someone I wasn't, okay? <laughs> but they said... Who are you? What are you doing here? I told them who I was, what we were doing there. We were coming for our special meeting for our mm -hmm. church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was going to be the stake organization. Mm -hmm. One young man said, I'm looking for the true church. Is yours the true church? I said, it is. And then he said, can I come? <laughs> I said, you can. You can all come. Mm -hmm. Where are you meeting? Well, I wasn't sure. President Headley was nearby. He explained where we were going to be meeting, down the road at an old theater. And many of them showed up at the meeting the next day. We think that 47 of those who came to that meeting, Ruth had invited. Well, wow. The district had 2015 on the rolls. Mm -hmm. And we had 2,300 that came. <laughs> And Ruth made sure that we had a part where they had reserved seating for those that were her best buddies now. 
that's nothing like missionary work mm -hmm. I ever did. Mm -hmm. Nothing <laughs> like that. Uh, the Laputa mm -hmm. and Kananga became stakes with no full-time missionaries. It's just remarkable. And Kananga, I asked in one of the meetings, brothers and sisters, tell me your challenges. I think I was speaking in French, and mm -hmm. somebody would translate me into Chaluba, mm -hmm. and there was no response. So I asked the question again, brothers and sisters, please tell me your challenges. And nobody said a thing. And then the third time, there was an older man who stood up, and in all sincerity said, Elder Renlund, how can we have any challenges? We have the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I wanted to go down and grab him by the tie and say, look around, look mm -hmm. at your situation. But the look in his eye was such that he understood the treasure he had in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I decided then and there, I wanted to grow up and be like him, to realize that he is rich beyond measure once the gospel of Jesus Christ is in his life.